Hi, I'm Paul Moyer, the designer of the QuoteFast program, and I want to tease you for the next 10 minutes or so just to show you what QuoteFast can do, how easy it is to use, and just how fast it is to do your quotes. Okay, so we're going to go straight into Mr. Example. So we click on Mr. Example, straight into Turbo Cost, and then that brings us to this screen here. Now you see also we've got these yellow L plate training courses, and if I was to click on that, what happens is it brings up the first uh, training course note and it says click on the required floor level. Okay, so we click on the ground floor and the second one pops up and it says select the plan to work on. Well, we're going to work on the plan here. The third one then pops up and it says click on any picture to cost an item for this job. Okay, well, we're going to start out with concrete, so we click on the concrete picture. So you see all you do is uh, you just simply follow the pop-up L plates and it'll take you right through how to cost a job. Okay, it says uh, what are we going to click on? Well we want to start with a waffle slab because we're going to do the plan on the right hand side of the screen and I've got the garage in concrete. So I click on the waffle slab and then it tells me to select the floor section uh, that this item's in. Okay, well we're doing a ground floor addition so I simply click on the picture of the ground floor addition. The next one pops up in step six and it tells me to what sort of quote do I want. Now you can do quotes in up to four stages if a client wants you to give you a staged quote. Uh, you can also do it just as a normal full quote or of course down the bottom there you see you can do it in units as well. Well we're just going to do step six of full quote so I click on full quote. So as you can see all I'm doing is just clicking on the pictures and following these L plate pop-ups. Okay, so it says to make multiple selections. So this purple list is like a like a little Google search engine. It simply reduces the items in the pink list down to a couple so that you can see what you want. Okay, well I want to use a combo and I want to use a 100 mil thick slab and it's a 20 MPA. Now the reason I'm using the combo as you can see down here is not only will it do the selected slab, it'll also do the perimeter around the outside and it'll do the concrete pump. You can see it up here in the listing. So we select the composite rate we want, so I click on it. The next pop-up L plate comes up and it says click to change the specs. Okay, I haven't changed any specifications down here for the slab, but as you can see from these little icons, here's the concrete, bar chairs, steel, sand, pest control, membrane, formwork, the waffle pods and then the uh, internal beams for the waffle uh, then of course you've got your bar chairs again um, then you've got the diggers you've got the concrete and then you've got the uh, pump okay so uh, I can simply click on trace to cost and this one over here says to right click to start any trace of a line or area you must start each line or area with a right click okay so there's a little note there says right click to start the trace the next pop-up tells us left click around the trace so I simply do what it says and I left click around the trace and we have just costed everything to do with the slab the footing around the outside and the concrete pump and I'll show you what I mean if I go to check and change you'll see up here you've got the pump for four hours then you've got a 300 by 500 by 20 MPA footing with all its components and then you've got everything to do with the actual slab itself in the pink you've got all the material costs, in the blue you've got all the labour costs and in the yellow you've got all the total costs. So you see I just costed all those items, material and labour, just by tracing around the garage. Okay so we'll go back again and let's do another concrete one. So I'll go up to the next concrete floors button. This time I choose concrete piers because we've got some piers. Okay again it's going to be in the ground floor edition and we want to do a full quote and we're going to search for what we want in step 7 here so that's a 450 diameter with a helix cage step 8 select an item to cost here's all the components through here and now this time instead of tracing we don't trace um, the piers we actually plot them so I click on this button here with the little pictures on it and as you can see you can do stumps and timber posts and steel posts and brick piers etc but what we want to do is a concrete pier so I click on that and the depth of the piers are 1200 and all I do is I just click wherever I want a pier and that's costing the concrete the steel cage and also the auger to dig the hole okay so that's them now the ones up the top they're much deeper they're about 2.7 deep and when I click on it you see the program will even draw the pictures much uh, higher than what these ones here so you can instantly see which are the deep piers and which aren't. 
Okay, so I finished all my concrete, so I now want to go back to the next section. Okay, the next one I'm going to do is a timber floor, so I click on timber floor. And then I've got sheet floor, compressed floor, strip flooring, sand and polish, engaged piers, anything to do with flooring. So I click on the sheet floor picture. Again, we're doing a ground floor addition. And we're doing a full quote. So it really is just a matter of clicking on pictures and following these steps here. So step seven, we want a combo. And I want standard joists. And the reason I want a combo is because it will do all the bearers and joists, the nails, the glue, the flooring, etc. It will also do the support and it'll do the pad. Now whether it's concrete, steel, timber or brick, we can change it to suit accordingly. Okay, I want one that's got strip floor over the top as well. So here's our spare, so here's a concrete for the footing. Then we've got our piers, our bearers, joist, flooring. Ceiling underneath. Now in all my timber floors when I made them up I put a ceiling there just in case you use this on the first floor you don't have to remember to do the ceiling underneath. But in this case we're only about 600 above the ground so I can simply click the delete button and it's gone. Then we've got our sand and polish and our glue and all our nails and then we've got our strip floor over. Now it says Tassie Oak is our standard floor but that's not what I want. So I can simply click on it and it gives me a list of all different sorts of flooring. Now I want um, the silky oak, so I click on the silky oak, and now I've got silky oak. Of course I can always change bearers and joist up here as well. But that's the space that I'm happy with now, so I go to trace, and I now trace around the timber floor. So again, right click, left click. I'm going to duck back in here because that bathroom is going to have compressed on it. So I just trace around wherever I've got the normal sheet flooring. And that's costing all the bears, the joists, the nails, the glue, everything to do with that uh, flooring. And it's also done the brick piers. And if I went into concrete, you'd see that it's already done the pad footings as well. Okay, so I can go to the next section now. So back to the orange button. So it's quite repetitious after a while. And as you can see, they're starting to turn green. These are the ones that have been costed. Red is the one that you're currently on. So I now go to external walls. Okay, so you've got cladded, brick veneer, double brick, a single brick, block, blue board, hebel, foam, parapets, gables, anything to do with external walls. Well, I want a cladded wall, so I go to cladded. Uh, again, we're doing a ground floor addition, so I click on the ground floor addition. And then step six, it's a full quote. And then step seven, I search for what I want. Well, I want a 2400, and I want a combo. And I've got plasterboard up the top here. And again, it's going to do the wall from top to bottom plate. Then it's going to do the subfloor brickwork. Then it's going to do the concrete footing. And it's going to do the pump. So it's going to do four things. But I've only got to choose and trace one of them. And that's the value of the GDX combos. Okay, so I click on the one I want up the top here. Again, these are the standard specs that I've chosen. But before I started the job, I actually set the specs for this particular job. So if I click on number 9 here, use the specs set for this uh, quote only, you'll see that some of the items turn green because that's what I set before I started in this particular uh, screen here. I changed the corners from the standard 55 to square set and I changed the skirting to 67 by 18. I changed the insulation to 2.5 by 430s. The cladding I changed to the chamfer hardy plank and the bricks are changed to a PC of 900. So these green items are specific to this particular job. You can, of course, change more things here if you need to. For example, uh, let's say you don't want a prefab, you want to build on site. You simply select it, and then you can select whichever one you want. Okay, so I want a 2400 uh, build on site, 90 by 45, uh, 450 centers, two top plates. And so I've just changed the frame. So you can change the specs uh, to anything you want on that particular job. Okay, so I now simply trace it. And then I just trace around the wall. So I right click, left click, left click. And I'll leave that because that's going to have wet board on the inside. Whereas you can see over here, we've got plaster board on the inside. So I start with another right click, left click, and I just simply trace around wherever I've got this particular wall going right across all the windows and doors uh, because later on the program will actually take out the area of the cladding uh, and the insulation. Okay, so I want the same thing but I want wet board on the inside. So I go back for the next wall type. 
I want cladded. I want it to be a ground floor addition. Full quote. I want a combo, wet board, 2400. And here it is here. So make two or three selections and that reduces that big long list right down to the exact one that I want. Again, set the specs. Okay, so I've just changed it to the specifications for this particular uh, job. I can change my frame to the 2490 450s and then I can start tracing again. Okay, if I put a little tick up here, it'll show the existing trace I've done and then all I've got to do is right click, left click and I've done both types of external walls. Okay, so we'll go back for the uh, next section. And as you can see, they're progressively turning green. Again, we're still on the external walls here. So let's just, uh, we'll skip the internal walls and we'll just go to the roof. Cost a roof with a pitch. Enter the roof pitch. Well, this one's 23 degrees. And we're doing a flat ceiling. We're not doing a cathedral ceiling. And we just continue. Okay, so again, you've got all different types of roofs and battens and barges and what have you. So I want a metal roof. So I click on metal roof. And again, it's a ground floor addition, and it's a full quote. Okay, so I want a combo, and I want a truss it. And again, the reason I want a combo is because it's going to do all the components of the roof. Okay, that's the trusses and the cladding and the insulation, the sarking, the gyp rock, etc. But it's also going to do all the eaves and gutters. It's also going to do the downpipe, safety rails, valley boards and valley irons. So it's going to do five things and all I have to do is trace once. So that again is the value of the GDX uh, combos. Okay, so the one I want up here is trust, complete roof, eaves and gutters and downpipes. Okay, so you can see I've already changed the insulation and the downpipes and set the specs beforehand. So it's me having to go through each one of these. And again, you've got the little icon pictures over here with all your fixings and insulations and framings and what have you. And safety rails and valley boards and valley irons. That's just to make it a little bit easier and a bit more interesting too. So at 9 or 10 o'clock at night when you're quoting, you don't get bored to tears looking through um, you know blue and grey lines and column spreadsheet type thing. We want to put a bit of colour and a bit of pictures in it to keep you awake. <laughs> okay. All right, so we trace around the um, roof, so I click on the trace, and then I simply right-click right around. We're putting a new roof over the whole thing. So I just trace around. Remember to trace around the uh, eave line, okay, because this is a roof. Don't trace around the walls. Okay, so I've just done all the roof, all the valley boards, valley irons, safety rails, etc. Now, if I go back to the next section you'll see that even though I haven't got to eaves and gutter, it's already turned green because it's been costed. So if I click on it, you can see that it's done the flat fibro eaves, which again, we can go to check and change and make it 600 sloping timber or whatever we need. It's also done the guttering and it's also done the down pipes. And then we go back for the next section again. Okay, now in this 10 minute or so video, that's what I'm going to do to do the main shell because I want to go into room inclusions to show you. Now down here, if you were to finish all those pictures, you would get this. As you walk through the job, it just would be a bare plasterboard shell. There'd be no windows, no doors, no light points and power points, no kitchens, no bathrooms, no wardrobes, just a bare shell. Step four, the room inclusions, is going to change bare shells into finished rooms. And how we do that is we simply click on the start button. That takes us to this screen here. And again, we just follow the notes here. So step one, select a floor level and a plan. Ground floor, plan. Step two, select a quote type and a window type. Full quote, okay, and then it's going to uh, be aluminium. And then uh, into step three here, we can now select the rooms that we've got here. Now we'll start with a garage, so we go down to garage. That creates this little black tag, and as I move it across into the middle of the garage there, it turns yellow. Okay, now I want to do the kitchen and the laundry, so I go down to kitchen, starts out red, turns it to yellow. Then I start the laundry, so I go to laundry, and put the laundry through here, and then we go to bedroom two. So I go up to bedroom two. Then I can go to the ensuite. So I go to ensuite. Then I've got a hallway and a living room. So I go to hallway and then living room. So I now go down to the living room. 
Okay, so they're making a black tag. The idea of this is that if you've got a tag over every um, room, then it means you haven't forgotten it. Now, as I just ticked on that green list, that costed a full generic kitchen, so uh, sinks and tubs and um, uh, cupboards and what have you. Uh, same with the laundry and all their light points and power points. When I clicked on garage, it did the uh, door here with the motor and the fluoro lights and the door to get into it and the generic window. So all those rooms have just been costed to about a 95 to 98 percent accuracy. So you can give a ballpark figure to a client very, very quickly. Now, if they come back and they say, look, I want a fine tune quote, I'll show you how to do it. I'll take the kitchen for starters and there's that red note there that says click to fine tune the room. That's right click. So I right mouse click on that and it brings up this one here. Now this is our generic kitchen. It's just an average kitchen, total value $15,000. And as you can see I've already preset some of the items in here uh, from set the specs. But that's not the kitchen we want. We want one with a polyurethane cupboards and we want one with a granite bench top. So I need to change the room. So very cleverly, we put a change rooms button up the top. So you simply click on that button and now you can build the actual room you want. Now there's no internal door, so I click on no door. I want polyurethane cupboards and I want a marble, uh, sorry, a granite bench top and the program finds it down the bottom here, so select the new room and now you see we've got polyurethane with a granite bench top and here's the polyurethane and uh, here's the granite. Okay, so I've totally changed the kitchen. Now, if I need to say make the granite bench top a $4,000 allowance, I just double click on it, put in 4000 and click enter on the keyboard and that's four. The cupboards, you might want them to be 20000 So you just put in 20000 and then you uh, hit the keyboard enter and it changes it. So you can change quantities and you can change rates. You can even change the item itself. For example, um, the kitchen sink, the builder standard sink, if you didn't want that, you can choose something different. Okay, so it's easy to change or change values or even if you don't want something you can hit there like you don't want a TV outlet, you just delete it. So by playing around with this list here you can totally change the existing um, uh, generic uh, kitchen. Okay, now I need to add an external door here. So I can add extra items to the room. I can add a door. Now it's a single hung door. And then I can go down to here where I've got the extra external hung door. So I can select that. I want one of those doors. I click OK. And you can see now you've got this extra door with it's the door, the extra set, the uh, butt hinges and the alcatraves and the door jam. Okay, but I also want to put a skylight in that kitchen. So I can click on add any individual item in the GDX database. I scroll down here till I get to um, skylights. Select skylights, sky tubes and windows. Choose whatever it is that I want. So I want one of those skylights. Click OK. Now I've added this extra item in, here's the 500 by 500 acrylic dome. So I've added doors, I've added skylights, I've changed values, I've changed the entire room. So you can see I really am fine tuning uh, this particular um, kitchen. Now the window is a 1021, but our generic window is not a 1021, uh, it's a uh, 1018. So I need to change it. So I simply click on the windows, click here on this picture. Now I can now put in the total job allowance or if you've got the quote for the window. So this one's about $8,000 I've got and I just OK it. Okay, so I've just put in $8,000 allowance for the all the windows in the entire job. Now the window that this is in is a 2400 cladding plasterboard. So I select it. And the reason I do that is because the program is going to take out the area of the insulation and whatever cladding, or if it was brickwork or blue board or whatever, it would take out the material and labour cost for that as well. So I need to know what wall this window is in. Okay, there's one window, and it's a thousand deep, a metre deep, it's 2100 wide, and I simply add that window in, and here it is down the bottom. Okay, so I've now finished. And uh, as we go down to the bottom here, uh, you'll see the window. 
you've got the sills, you've got the head, you've got the window itself, you've got the architraves and you've got polyflash. But with the window you'll notice there's no material cost because we just put in an $8,000 allowance for it. Um, if you, we were doing prefabs, we're not, but if we were doing a, um, a build on site, then I don't need the head, so I could just simply delete that if I wanted to. So I've just changed a generic kitchen into an exact kitchen that I wanted. When I go back for the next room, I can say, yes, the room tomb is complete, and you see how it turns green. Okay, now I'll do one more. I'll just um, do the, say, bedroom two. So I right click. Here's our generic room with the three sliding door robe. That's not what I want. I want one with the two hung door robe. So I change the room. Single hung door to get into the room. The two hung robe. Here it is down the bottom. And I've just totally changed the room. And then of course you can go through and make any of the other changes that I just showed you in doing the kitchen. And then we click the next room again go back and it turns green. So all you have to do is go through each of those rooms and you've done a full and complete uh, costing. Now when I go back to this uh, screen here, this is the costed item screen, this then gives you a summary of every item that you've costed in the job and as you can see when I scroll down it's done a whole heap of items there and they're all broken up into the various sections in the job whether they're concrete floors or eaves and gutters or en suites or whatever it costs the entire job out materials and labor and that's how the quite fast GDX program works and as you can see it's a matter of clicking on pictures it's very fast it's very accurate and it's very easy to use so I hope you've enjoyed this